morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Forest Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you're here with us online, and uh, we thank you for being here. And uh, anything that we can do to help you, uh, please contact us at, for, at prayer at forestchurch.org. We'll be glad to help you in any way we can or get you connected with, with uh, any kind of assistance you might need. But we're again, we're glad that you're here, and we welcome you this morning uh, to our online service. Uh, a few announcements. One thing is we're preparing uh, to move back inside. What does that mean? That means that the target date that we're shooting for to come back in here in the sanctuary is November the 1st. Right now, we're, we're lining up our procedures for what, what it would look like, uh, how we would get people in and out of the building, what it would take to sanitize, those kind of things. Uh, so we're, we're very uh, excited to be able to, to begin to think about that. And we're glad uh, to, to, uh, to come back in here. That's going to mean some limitations. It's probably going to mean wearing masks. It's going to mean not singing like we normally would. It's going to mean a shorter service, all those kind of things. But it's also going to mean the handbells will be here. The musicians will be here. Uh, we'll probably have a few limited singers to sing, uh, those kind of things. So, so in, in one way, it's going to be the same as it is outside and, and brought inside. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we're going to kind of limit the amount of uh, breathing that, all, that we all do uh, together, particularly the kind of breaths that you would need to take to expel energy. So, uh, so again, we're going to try to do, do as best we can. You know, we obviously would have to limit the fellowship time. We would want you to uh, leave kind of immediately from the, the uh, sanctuary. And, um, you know, you, you're welcome to talk on the steps and those kind of things. But, you know, the leaving the sanctuary would be something we would need to do kind of in a regular way and obviously people won't be able to you won't be able to sit in your normal seat you know you'll have to f probably find somewhere new to call your seat uh your seat may be blocked uh it's nothing personal uh it's just uh you know the way we're gonna have to distance things so so we're but we're excited to be able to begin to think about that the other thing that we are are going to change in the schedule is October 15th, we're going to shift from back from 9.30 to 10.30 again. Uh, so stay on your toes. Uh, and actually, it's the 18th is that Sunday. Uh, but we set the 15th as kind of a middle of October date uh, to shoot for, to move that time back up to 10.30. Uh, so so we're, we're in the process of, of rolling with this just like you've been. I know your life has changed and the church, our life together as the church has changed. But at the same time, a lot of things have given us new opportunities. Uh, we're, we're still planning to do things online. We'll have the FM transmitter. If you want to drive up here and be part of the service but not inside, you want to hear everything that's going on, you'll still be able to hear that FM transmitter. Uh, we, we are not going to really be taking anything away. And these videos, I'm still going to make these videos. Uh, you know, we wound up in the middle of March uh, with, early March with, you know, no clue, no plan. We didn't know how, how this, uh, this coronavirus thing would work out. And, and it, has, it has been an adventure, uh, and it continues to be an adventure. But, you know, we've got to keep having things like this ready for you in case everything shuts back down. Uh, then we'll be ready to, to give you uh, help and, and, um, and, and worship where you are, uh, no matter where that is. So, so again, we're going to continue to be here for you and continue to be doing ministry together, and we need, we need you to be part of that as well. There's going to be announcements coming out about things like uh, how we're going to do the trunk retreat. Obviously, the yard sale uh, is, is still in the works uh, for the 27th, so that, that's coming up real soon. Um, if you send an email to yard sale at Forest Church, if you'd like to volunteer during one of those days to either uh, take in items or to, to work on that Saturday, you know, we'll need everybody uh, here, as many people as possible to be working at the, at the yard sale um, and, to, and to help with that event. The other thing is Sunday school continues online for the children. There's a Zoom meeting. If you send an email to prayer at Forest Church, uh, I'll, I will be able to get you the, the Zoom invite for that, the, the numbers to, to put in for that. But they, they meet after the service on Sunday morning uh, at, at about 1130, I think it is. So, you know, if you've got kids and you, and you, uh, and they've been, uh, looking forward to doing something with church, they can do something as well. Also, I'm going to continue to put out, uh, um, children's sermon videos. Uh, we got caught with a short week last week, but, uh, this week, uh, I'm still planning on doing something for the kids. So, so be watching this space, 
It'll probably come out before this, actually. Um, but we're going to continue to do that as well. And also, the Adult Church School is online on Facebook. So uh, we'll upload that video. Uh, you can go on there and comment. We're going to try to figure out a way, maybe, maybe to watch live. In other words, you can do a watch party. Uh, maybe to schedule a watch party where we can all watch, watch me together, but I'll be on there watching with you. Uh, and then if you have any other questions or things, we could put that into the, into the text uh, for that. So, so again, we're, lots of things, things are going on. It's just that they're different. They're different than they were uh, six months ago, nine months ago, a year ago. You know, that's the way this is. And, and uh, we're going to continue to continue to do great things. I, I'm, again, continue to be impressed by the way that people have brought in uh, goods for Bedford Christian Ministries. Again, check your email for what, uh, for what um, their particular needs are. And if, you, uh, if you're not on that email from the church, if you're not getting emails either from the, from the, directly from the office or over MailChimp, um, please let us know. I mean, there's one way you can sign up for the MailChimp yourself, which is to go on the website and subscribe to the email there. Uh, that, that will allow you to do that. And then for some reason, if you've been getting them and are not, uh, MailChimp will let you back in. Uh, oftentimes, if we put your uh, email address back in, you'll still have to affirm that or confirm that later uh, with an email that they'll send to you. So it's easier for you to override that process if you go to the, to the website. But again, we're glad that you're, you're here. Um, you can always uh, donate to the church uh, either through the mail, in person, uh, or on Vanco. If you go to forestchurch.org slash donate, uh, we will be able to, uh, you'll be able to connect with the church uh, and, and give that way. And, and, you know, we would encourage you to do that. Uh, the, less, the less you need to get out, uh, the, the less stamps you need to buy, those kind of things, hey, that, that would, uh, you know, save, save you time and, and energy. Um, and so, you know, whatever's convenient to you, do that. Again, and this is, this is the big thing to remember. All of this is about uh, conscience. You've got to use your conscience with this. And there's no wrong answer for how to meet this COVID-19. What do I mean? If you feel uncomfortable doing anything, continue to do whatever it is that you were doing. I'm not saying to be afraid. What I'm saying is uh, anything that you feel like uh, is, you're not ready for, that's okay. And you tell everybody in your life, hey, I'm not ready to do that yet. Uh, I'm not ready to come back to church yet. I'm not ready to, uh, to go out to dinner. Uh, that's okay. And, and, uh, and God would tell you that. But that's okay. You, you do the best that you can do each day. Uh, and if you need some reassurance, hey, let me know, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll help you work through it. Uh, but again, we're glad you're here, uh, and um, we'll turn now uh, to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for delivering us from so much for so long. And we ask, Lord, that you would continue to watch over us and guide us and keep us safe. We pray for all those in need in our community and around the world, for those who need healing, for those who are grieving today. We pray for comfort. For those who are in darkness, we pray for hope. And for those who simply need to be free from any kind of oppression in their life, we pray for justice and mercy. We pray for our nation. We pray for those who lead us, that they would be able to find solutions together, that they would be able to walk together in your wisdom. We pray for the leaders here in the Commonwealth, and particularly locally, as they seek to both educate our children and keep us safe with our health. We know they have difficult decisions ahead, but we know that you can guide them through it. So show them the way, reveal to them the path that is just, the path that is right, and the path that is good. And for everything we do as a church, we pray for that same path, to be connected in Christ, if not in person, through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from Philippians 1, 21 through 30. Let us pray as we approach God's word. Lord God, be with us in your spirit through your word today. May your word be a two-edged sword that cuts through our false beliefs 
and shows us the right way. Give us courage and give us perseverance through your son Jesus Christ who suffered for us and who loved us. Amen. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I'm to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I prefer. I'm hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I'm convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you're standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation, and this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you're having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I have still. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. So this chapter actually has one of my favorite verses uh, that Paul uses, one of his, his best sayings, to live as Christ, to die as gain. Uh, those words have comforted me everywhere from uh, the operating table to times I've been afraid. Uh, those are great words. What does it mean? It means, uh, you know, if, you're, if you die, you're with Christ. If I'm here, I'm with Christ. So both are good. There's not a bad way to be. It doesn't mean that I live fatalistically, that I go out and look to die. Uh, Believe me, I'm going to try to stay alive as many days as I possibly can. I'm going to take care of my body as best I can, uh, give or take. I'm I'm doing better right now. Um, And I'm going to do things in ministry and try to push myself uh, towards a little bit of risk, uh, depending on what that risk is. Sometimes I've taken risks that I didn't know I was taking in ministry, whether it's in other countries and places like that, and that's okay. Because when I was in those situations, I, this verse would come to mind, to live as Christ, to die as gain. Hey, it's fine. I'm going to be okay. And that's what I want you to know in this, in this season. I think this has made people have a lot of mortal fear Uh, And that doesn't mean to be reckless. Christ would not tell us to be reckless. But also, Christ would would not tell us to be afraid either. Uh, To to find this calm, to find this peace in the middle of this storm of anxiety that the world is having right now, uh, it it can really catch you up and make you feel like you're, you're out of control and the world is out of control and there's just nothing you can do about it. Paul was in a similar situation. And imagine how much worse it was for them. They were being thrown in jail. They were being killed. They were being oppressed just for being Christians, just for believing in Christ because it was so radical. It was so different. And it was asking the world to live in a different way, to follow the commands of God into the world uh, and to live not like the world lived, but as God wanted the people to live. When Paul gave them this challenge, the challenge that had come from God, he was always having to encourage the congregations that he knew. And the church at Philippi is no different. They needed encouragement. They could be like every other church. They could be a stormy bunch. God's called us into the world to take some risks, to realize that to live is Christ. While we're in this world, while we are alive, whatever amount of days we have, They are days, once we have faith in Christ, to live as Christ. From day to day, that might mean different things. It might mean at your office, you're seeking ways to live as Christ. To be different in a good way from those around you. Notice that Paul is is talking to a group of people and helping them to live together, but also to live together towards the outside world. Now, they had a, a sense of being attacked. Uh, I, don't, I don't really feel this same uh, sense of attack from the world around me, but it's still, 
uh, an important way to live and understand that if we will be, as he says, one mind for the faith of the gospel. One of the things that we have to remember as Presbyterians, as those who are Protestants and who run the church together in things like committees and our session here at the church, which is the board of the church, uh, one of the things that the Book of Order reminds us and Paul reminds us here with this scripture, when we gather together as Christians, we're not to seek our own mind. We're not to seek our own will, what we want personally, individually. But God may give you ideas personally to share with the, with the bunch. But what we are to seek is the mind of Christ to be of one mind, and not of one mind of one person in the group, but to be of one mind of Christ. Christ is the head of the church. The mind of Christ is what we seek as the church to follow. What is it that Christ is showing us, revealing to us, to do from day to day for ministry for the church? In some ways, that's, that is one of the greater challenges of the church. What does God want us to do? We're here in the in forest, in the suburbs of Lynchburg? How do we see this community around us? How do we show them that we're of one mind with the faith of the gospel, the trust that the gospel is true, that the good news is true? If people see us and encounter us in the world, do they say, hey, those people believe in this hope for the future and that things can be different now? That things don't have to be different someday later, but that they can be different now. Their hope for this world, not just the next, but their hope for this world is in Christ. Christ will transform everything now. It says don't be intimidated by your opponents. Don't be intimidated by anybody or anything when you're working together. If you're not working together, you have a lot to be afraid of, uh, and that's God. Uh, God doesn't want that. Instead, let's stand firm in the Spirit, like Paul says here too. That's The Spirit is the presence of God among us in the church. Again, if we seek the mind of Christ, we seek the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, not our own power, not our own strength, not our own smarts, not our own cunning, but instead the power of the Spirit that lives and breathes among us today. I love what Paul says about uh, seeing people in person or hearing about them. Uh, this is the old question of if a tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound? Uh, do you behave when people are watching you? Or, uh, you know, do you do the right thing when people are watching you? But when you think nobody's watching you, you do the wrong thing. Uh, when you think that people can see you or hear about you, the truth is, God wants us to do the right thing uh, for the right reasons in the right way all the time. This makes living a self-directed thing through God's help. We make excuses in our lives. We blame other people for our own behavior. But yet, we want to be the kind of people that give a great report for the Lord. What does God want for Forest Presbyterian Church and for everybody who's listening to this? Uh, our world wants fame. Uh, I think it's funny that this week uh, in Hollywood, people took two days off of Instagram to try to protest against something that Instagram was doing. I'm not sure exactly what they were protesting, but only two days. After those two days, they needed to get back on Instagram so they could be what they are, what their job is, is being famous. For us, the fame that we seek as a church, as God's people, is not so that others would know us, but so that others would know the grace that God is, has given us and the ministry that's being done because of that. You want people to say, hey, there are great things going on there at that church. Those people serve and are in so many positions of service around this world around this community. I want to be part of that. 
I want to imitate that. Because if you're imitating Christ, people would want to imitate that too. Now, here's my concern for this passage and for uh, everything that we see in this world. And that is suffering. We believe in Christ, but it's a privilege to suffer for Christ as well. This word suffering is a curious word because pain is what you feel in your body. Uh, Suffering is what you experience in your mind. And if you're suffering, you can overcome the suffering. Pain, illness, violence, um, those are things that sometimes are beyond your control and sometimes you choose to suffer them, um, but other times not. So I don't want you to get the impression that Christ wants you to stay in some kind of bad situation, some kind of bad place, uh, that Christ wants you to, you to suffer, uh, that that's the only way for you to exist. At the same time, Christ makes meaning of our suffering. Life is hard. And we all think, well, they've all got it easier than I do, whoever they is, uh, that I'm the one who's suffering. Uh, Christ gives you meaning to that suffering. Christ helps you to see that there is purpose in what you're going through. There is purpose in what others are going through. And that walking beside them gives them purpose. And what I would say to that is, what Christ gives us in this belief, in this trust, is also an extension of the world around us to, not, again, not be afraid, uh, to not find it anxious but to know that the sufferings, the fears, the anxieties of this world are something that can be overcome in Christ. And in that way, we suffer with others and we suffer alongside them and feel this feeling of empathy. For suffering here, I might put empathy, the privilege of feeling empathy for this world. Christ suffered for this world and took on our sins on the cross We can suffer for this world through our empathy, to understand the feelings of others. The greatest challenge of Christianity when it comes to interrelations with others, personal relations with others, is to try to understand how they're feeling and to try to feel the way they feel. And understanding how they feel and how they live and how they experience life gives us an understanding for how we should treat them, how we should help them, how we should encourage them, and how we should share Christ with them. So as you go into the coming days, take that kind of suffering with you into the world for this COVID-19 era, for this era of, of violence and injustice. But try to understand the way the other person feels. We spend a lot of time uh, expressing ourselves. I, uh, I saw a, a sarcastic comment on, on Facebook the other day that said, uh, that's just what I needed was somebody to tell me how they felt about masks because I haven't heard anything about that yet. Hearing those comments about masks or the world, what we really want to understand is what's going on behind people's rage. What goes on behind their fear? What goes on behind their hurt? This is where Christ can help us go into the world and share that suffering and show them that faith is the real answer to that. That there's trust in something more. That there's trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and that he can get us through it all. Let us pray. Lord God, as a community of faith, make us of one mind, standing together in the Spirit, to walk out into the world after we've gathered together to hear your word, to serve others, to suffer alongside them, and to show that the world 
us hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. So have a great week. May God bless you in the coming days. May God's face shine upon you. And may the Lord's presence be with you every day. Amen.